strong, healthy, happy and vibrant children. The joy of every parent, the pride of every growing society and the hope of every nation. But what happens to a nation when the health and well-being of its future leaders is on a fast and steady decline due to preventable diseases from dirty water, poor sanitation and hygiene? While clean water, decent toilets and good hygiene practices are essential for the survival and development of children, the latest Nigerian WASH National Outcome Routine Mapping Survey shows that around 100,000 children under the age of 5 in Nigeria die from diseases caused by the nation's poor levels of access to water, sanitation and hygiene. Sadly, Nigeria's children are not the only ones affected by a lack of access to these basic services. 112 million people, a staggering 58.5% of the country's population, do not have basic sanitation. 78.8%, 151.6 million people, do not have access to basic hygiene facilities, and 47 million, which is 24.4% of the population, practice open defecation. While the indices for clean water supply are significantly better than those of sanitation, 26.6% of Nigeria's population, 51 million people, still lack access to clean water. Nigeria missed the 2015 Millennium Development Goal sanitation target, and access to improved sanitation in the country decreased by 9%, over the 25-year period of the MDGs. Access to piped water service, which was at 32% in 1990, is now less than 10%, and currently 38% of all improved water points and around 46% of all water schemes are non-functional. Chronic gaps in governance capacity and funding impair sector sustainability and development have led to non-performing and vastly underfunded infrastructures which are seldom maintained, renewed or expanded. Nigeria is not on track to eliminate open defecation by the national target date of 2025 or the Sustainable Development Goal target of 2030. The United Nations noted that countries where open defecation is practiced are the same countries with the highest levels of poverty, wealth disparity, and underfined child mortality. These assertions are true about our country today, considering the happenings around us. It is clear that Nigeria's water, sanitation, and hygiene sector is in crisis, and in response to that state of affairs, Nigeria's President Mohamedou Buhari in November 2018 demonstrated the highest commitment by formally declaring a state of emergency in the country's water, sanitation and hygiene sector and launching a national action plan for the revitalization of the water, sanitation and hygiene sector. I am aware that our country did not meet the Millennium Development Goals target for water supply and sanitation that ended in 2015. The Sustainable Development Goals targets 6.1 and 6.2 for water supply, sanitation and hygiene are even more demanding as they require water supply, sanitation and hygiene services to be provided in adequate quantity and quality on premises at affordable prices. This cannot be achieved if we continue with a business as usual approach. It is on this premise that I fully endorse the decision taken at the meeting of the Federal Executive Council in April this year to declare state of emergency on our water sanitation and hygiene sector. This declaration was necessary for creating pathways to the recovery phase of sustainable wash in Nigeria and it has meant a high level of political commitment to wash issues, the activation of authorities, human and financial resources for sector improvements, 
the acceleration of rules, regulations, processes and procedures wherever necessary including tax incentives. The streamlining of administrative procedures such as procurement requirements and special treatment and high priority to the sector by relevant ministries, departments and agencies. The overall goal of the National WASH Action Plan is to ensure all Nigerians have access to sustainable and safely managed WASH services by 2030. The plan is made up of three phases set to revitalize the WASH sector. An 18-month emergency plan up to October 2019 or until substantial progress is reported. A five-year recovery program up to December 2022 a 13-year revitalization strategy through end 2030. The plan is to jointly commit the federal government of Nigeria and states to urgently establish the institutional and funding foundations for sustainable wash services and engage the urban and rural wash sectors on an accelerated development path towards 2030 SDGs. The rollout of prioritized actions during the emergency period has started in earnest with the approval of the National Campaign to End Open Defecation and the framework for the establishment of the National WASH Fund by states. Henceforth, federal government support to state governments will be based on their commitment to implement the National Water Supply, Sanitation and Action Plan in their respective states and to end open defecation by 2025. To build the WASH systems that will be required to deliver the vision of the National WASH Action Plan and attain universal access by 2030, Nigeria would need new skills, competences and technologies not presently available in the country. The government is however unable to solely and adequately fund WASH investment to achieve universal access from current revenues due to competing development priorities. As such, rather than reinventing the wheel, the federal government has made the conscious decision to open up opportunities in the Nigerian WASH sector to an international community of development partners, academia, research institutes and the private sector. Nigeria is no stranger to shift towards a market-led approach. In the recent past, the widespread adoption of sanitation marketing approaches in intervention across Nigeria has not only led to sustainable improvements in household access to sanitation facilities, but has also created jobs for builders, sales agents, toilet part manufacturers, amongst others. In addition, the commercialization of water utilities in states is leading to improved water supply in urban areas across the country. The country's political leadership is open to further attract investment that would incorporate principles of equity. As such, Nigeria has outlined an ease of doing business strategy that has included 140 reforms and exceptional measures needed to deal with sector crisis and SDG challenges. The country is eager to improve mutual understanding on what it would take to achieve Sustainable Development Goal 6 in Nigeria and the opportunities it needs to provide to strengthen partnerships and collaboration with international community. Nigeria is open for WASH business and welcomes more robust, diverse international cooperation agreements. I want to state at this point that for us to make significant progress in our water supply and sanitation, the system must be run as a business. Consequently, I want to assure you that my ministry is committed to promoting and supporting any partnership arrangement that will enhance increased access to water supply and sanitation towards meeting national and international targets, especially the SDGs. One of the ways the federal government of Nigeria exhibits this commitment is through its viable public-private partnership incentives, some of which include government incentives for investors in the water sector, tax incentives, land acquisitions, equity participation, access to concessionary loans, and through government subsidies for viability gap funding and partial risk guarantee. On this note, 
I wish to express my profound gratitude to all our development partners and countries that have been supporting our water sector and to call for their continual support that will enable us to achieve our national aspirations. The National Watch Action Plan has received the highest political commitment. It was launched by Mr. President himself, and during that period where he saw the gaps that we need to meet, he declared a state of emergency for the work sector of Nigeria. There are a lot of opportunities in terms of investment. We saw that for us to be able to meet sustainable development goals in 2030, we will need to invest close to $63 billion. And this is huge and humongous. Um, and this we enable our people to draw water for municipal water supply. We are enjoining our partners, especially those that have come to attend this closed door meeting today, to look for areas to support this our developmental efforts in terms of capacity building, in terms of new technologies, in terms of fund support, you know, in terms of even monitoring and evaluation. These are whole government of areas where they can come to support us. And we appeal that they will support us in all these efforts. Mm -hmm.